Hey everyone, thank you for stopping by Living To Do's review of Married At First Sight, Season 16, Episode 12, Getting To The Crust. Before I get started with the review, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it and I thank you in advance. So in this episode, everyone had a meeting with Dr. Pepper. You know how those meetings go. She's checking up on the couple, see how they're doing, how they're progressing, and sharing her wisdom with the youngsters. So the first couple we'll talk about will be Gina and Clint. You know, G um, Clint wants to get closer to Gina. He wants to have uh, deeper conversations to get to know her better. He wants to know everything about her. Um, when they get with Dr. Pepper, Dr. Pepper is talking about being vulnerable. Gina can only get really vulnerable with women. She thinks this is because she was raised by her mother. Her parents divorced when she was real young and she had to be independent as early as seven. So this is why Gina is that go-getter. She's the job owner. She's, it stems from her background, or so it seems. Clint is an open book. He tells you whatever you want to know. He likes to talk. Uh, they have different styles of communicating and being vulnerable. And Dr. Pepper says that uh, sticking to the st styles that they like won't find them love. And that's true. That's what being vulnerable is, letting go and letting someone in. And even when you ask people to do it, it's still hard. When that is your direction, your instructions to do so, it's still hard. Um, when that with Clint, you know, it doesn't seem that way. Uh, he's very, I think he's more than a surface kind of guy. He talks. Um, I think that advice is mainly for Gina. She needs the help. Later, they were given questions to ask each other for deeper conversations. And she said one of her problems uh, was avoiding asking for help. Uh, she just thinks she's real independent. And I guess that's just a source of uh, being a burden is what she feels that she is if she asks for help. And Clint is the same way. He hates asking for help, but he's smart enough to know when he needs to ask for help. With Clint, at first I was really rough on Clint, but he has the right answers. He has the right attitude. Um, you know, he's willing to open up. He wants to get to know you. He's showing you his true self. He does have fears. One of his fears is, you know, he's... 40 years old and he's afraid he won't have a family. He really would like a family. Uh, he's a great guy. He has a great sense of humor. She talked about one of the questions is what did you have to tell the other one after getting to know them for a while? You had to wait. And he said that, you know, he changed Hank's last name and Hank's the dog. It's her dog. You know, he's just, he, I think he can have a soft heart, bring people closer, uh, and make those connections with people. Gina, on the other hand, she's she can make connections, but I think she's kind of turned off by Clint. You know, they had a bad honeymoon, and sometimes when you have a run-in with somebody, it's hard to get back on track, especially like a love track. So, unfortunately, I just don't see them working out to the end. Okay, on to the next couple. Okay, the next couple will be Nicole and Chris. Nicole and Chris go and experience goat yoga with Nicole's dad. He's back in town. And the goats are walking all over their back. They're having a good time. It, it seems Chris or Nicole's dad, he's always in a good, he has a good sense of humor. He hears the goats making the goat sounds and he's all Nicole is that you I mean he's just always fun loving with they seem like they have a great relationship um in fact we learned that Nicole got her father into yoga this is something he norm he regularly does in fact he's now 
a yoga instructor. I would never saw that coming. It's interesting. They sat down and talked, and they Chris found out that um, her parents got divorced when she was about four, but her dad was always in her life. Though, as they got older, he, you know, he lived somewhere else and she would come over to visit and she became mean uh, to her dad. Uh, she had to sleep on his couch when she came over there. So I guess he must have had an apartment or something. And at times she ditched him. But kids will do that. That's just they're growing and they don't know how to feel sometimes. They're just acting out. Um, so that's, to me, that seems kind of normal. Uh, her dad, when asked about her marriage, he said he couldn't be happier for her in this marriage. He later talked to Chris and told him that he can now call him dad because he earned his respect. So Chris, uh, is rubbing off on the parents. He's a good guy and he, he's, he's kind hearted. I think the dad can see it. I think anybody can see it. It looks like they're going to have a great relationship. They met with Dr. Pepper. And of course, the subject for everyone is being vulnerable. And um, Nicole says being vulnerable makes you weak. And I do get when people say that. I understand that. It makes you raw, which makes you exposed. And if something goes wrong, you know, it's your fault. You know, you gave the ops, the artillery to hurt you. Um, and you have no one to blame but yourself. You beat yourself up. It puts you in a bad headspace. The likelihood of something going wrong is high. It's a big risk just to find comfort or love. I get that. It's hard to find the right people to be vulnerable with. Dr. Pepper responds and she says that being vulnerable makes you show strength. And I kind of, I, you know, I get what she's saying there. It, it's, it's allowing you to be yourself, not hiding. And hiding, it takes up a lot of energy. They had their questions from the experts. And I like what they did. They were like exercising while asking each other the questions. Um, I don't know the exact questions, but it's like being shamed of something you did in your past. And Nicole was ashamed for lying to her mother about being burned by her boyfriend. Um, she just said she got burned by the, her straightener and then she was picking at it. And her mom knew she was lying. And I mean, that's embarrassing. I don't know if her mom knew exactly how it happened that someone physically burned her daughter but she knew she was lying. <laughs> I wonder if she found out on the show or was she told earlier what the exact, I'm sure um, Nicole opened up to her mother. And Chris, his one thing that he's kind of ashamed of is that he had a party. His mom allowed, allowed him to have a party and he had people over and the cops came and his mom almost got arrested because there was underage drinking. Wow, Chris. <laughs> Your own mom almost got arrested? Now, I just start. <laughs> something made me think. If that was Eris's mom and, and a party that he had, would she had have gotten arrested? Um, how their lives would have been so different. I don't know. It just something made me think about that. Uh, they got off of a big break because definitely he said his mom, you know, something should have happened uh, with that underage drinking at her home. Um, later, they talked about their biggest insecurities. And Chris, you know, one of the things he was questioning is why didn't anyone want to stay with him? Oh, that was so sad to me. He's a good guy. Who? What kind of girls have you been encountering? There's so many girls out there that, that he just couldn't find someone to stay with him. And Nicole, one of her biggest worries is this leaning into her happiness because if things don't work out, of course, that's everybody. I think mean, that's life. It's just the risk you have to take because 
it, it's just a, a crapshoot if, if if the relationship will make it or not. <sighs> but I think they will. Something tells me that they open up, they have a good support system. Uh, I think they will make it. Okay, on to the next couple. Okay, the next couple will be Eris and Jasmine. They talk to Dr. Pepper, and Dr. Pepper asks what will help them connect with one another. They start off with saying, answering deeper conversations. Um, Jasmine, she's a mentoring girl. She's a coach, a cheerleading coach and she's mentoring her girls and she's taught them to speak up for themselves and Jasmine saying that she just started to love herself and her person is not feeling her you know she's opening up and I think she is being vulnerable and Dr. Pepper tells her have you ever thought that maybe it's not you, which I'm glad Dr. Pepper told her that so she can maybe stop beating herself up and think about maybe it's not me and there's nothing wrong with me. And Eris is saying that his problem with connecting stems from major deaths in his life. I think he had a friend who killed himself, a friend who was killed by a drunk driver and his dad was killed and I I don't mean to minimize his loss but I thought that his answers it felt like a cop-out I thought that's the sympathy vote that you get oh oh and bypass the real reason why you are not connecting because you connect with everybody else out in the streets so or sexually connect. I, I'm sure you didn't emotionally connect with those people, but you made some type of connection and you give her nothing. I think in some ways he does respect her um, by not just um, using her, I guess. So I can thank him for that. Uh, but I, I don't think we're knowing the real reason why he's not connecting to, with her, drawn to her. He gave her flowers in this episode. Last episode, we see him, him kiss her goodbye. And he says respectful things to her about helping with her mom and her cancer and the dogs. But there's a whole lot missing with him. A lot of pieces missing in that puzzle. Uh, Dr. Pepper encourages them to have deeper conversations and um, that shouldn't be hard for Jasmine because Eris is so shallow. Um, she can start, he says he does have deeper conversations, but I'm not seeing it. I don't, I don't know. They do um, talk about when they're deeper conversations, they get together and one of the questions is the hardest thing you had to forgive and Jasmine has nothing, no pageant answers, no nothing. Um, Eris says he had to forgive his friend's suicide. <sighs> okay. All right, Eris. Um, we get a visit. Well, Eris gets a visit from Jasmine's mother, Yvette. Yvette, you know, she is actually suffering from breast cancer. She looks great and great spirits. And she, in fact, um, she's always smiling. Jasmine looks just like her mom. The eyes, the nose, the mouth. Uh, she looks very much like her mother. And uh, when they get to talking about, you know, the complications in the marriage, uh, Eris has the nerve to to blame Jasmine for not being able to have deeper conversations. Um, why don't you start with what fault you play in this? Lead with that. Um, maybe the mom can find the answers quicker that way because you are the root of the problems in this marriage. Um, 
Jasmine told her mother and Yvette that Eris is not going to have sex with her until after decision day. She told her mother that and Yvette brought that up in her conversation with Eris. And, you know, it's kind of weird. I, I mean, that's great that she has an open relationship with her mom, but it, I just felt a little uncomfortable. She's bringing it up with her son-in-law. Uh, she's thinking the problems are that they as a couple uh, or individuals, they're overthinking everything. Uh, and I don't know. I think Jasmine came into this marriage uh, like an adult. I think she was ready for it. I think if anything, if she's overthinking things, he's led her to do that with his awkwardness, his weirdness. And Yvette, Jasmine's mother, says she asks Eris, what are you willing to sacrifice? Which I think is a good question. You have to sacrifice your uh, childlike behavior. You have to grow up. You, have, you know what to do, Eris. You need to stop playing these games and man up. Find intimacy with that girl. Because you can find it with a random person. I think that you could find the intimacy with her. Uh, you know, all that talk beforehand and now you act like this. It's just awkward and weird to me. Okay, enough time spent on him. On to the next. Okay, the last couple will be Shaquille and Kirsten. They speak with Dr. Pepper and Dr. Pepper is there to give them guidance. She was telling them not to make any ups, uh, assumptions and to do unto others as they would do unto themselves. Uh, basically, take care of your partner, um, know your partners, try to fulfill some of your partner's needs. They talked about their childhood and Kirsten talked about being a product of divorce and feeling shame. She was sh felt shame, I guess, that her parents were divorced. She didn't know why this was happening. Um, she found herself not talking to people about her feelings, which I get that. I just thought what she was saying and the feeling that she was projecting was generic. So I didn't feel anything for her on that. Now, Shaq, he grew up without his father. He found his father when he was 17. Uh, and he found in his heart forgiveness for his father for not being there for him. That felt more real. What she said, I just didn't connect with her saying it. I know people do have an issue with that. But for her, it was more, it was just very generic. Um... Dr. Pepper asked about chemistry. They said it was increasing. And he told a story about how he kisses her on her forehead when he leaves. And one day he didn't kiss her on the forehead. He left. But he did receive a text from her. And I guess she was questioning where her, her kiss was. She needs her kisses on her forehead. And, uh... Dr. Pepper said, you know, encourage spousal kissing, not just simple kisses on the forehead. And she was telling Shaquille how this must have made her feel, Kirsten made her feel rejected for missing one kiss one day on the forehead. Hmm. This man has done everything right as far as trying to connect with this woman. I felt that he should not have been scolded in any way. That I felt that she, Kirsten, should have been scolded by Dr. Pepper. We should have witnessed it because you made him feel rejected this whole time. What about that? I didn't like how she just, well, what we saw, what they edited into the show is that he did something wrong about not kissing her on her forehead one particular morning because she was sleeping. But you turn this into him rejecting her and she's been rejecting him this whole time. Uh, no, nah, no. Nah. I, I'm sure she should have said something. I mean, if she did, they should have definitely put it that in the show. Um, 
she was encouraging Dr. Pepper's spousal kisses. And she says to give Kirsten more of your masculine, desirous energy or self. Later, they get back to their apartment and they're talking about a website or logo that she would like him to make for her business. She's a real estate agent and he's making it. She likes what he's coming up with. She really likes this. Uh, I see a little spark of excitement in her. And she, I don't know if she got confused, but she said something like, you don't have to charge me. I pay you in other ways. <laughs> you don't have to charge me. <laughs> Um, but what I thought, what I saw here, witness here was her loosening up with him. And it, after she, he was making this logo that excited her. So maybe acts of service is her love, her love language. They got to body paint and that's for them to connect. And Sh Shaquille took the lead on this. Kirsten came out in a really cute outfit, um, like a white bikini with a black uh, charong, uh, sarong. And she really just, uh, it was just really cute for little festivities of body paint. So he's body painting her and he, it's really cute. She's liking it. The paint's cold, but she seems to really like him painting her. Uh, he's just, you know, just putting some paint on. It looks cute, actually. He makes some designs around her neck. It came out cute. Um, and later he had a can of whipped cream and he put it in her mouth, started squirting it in her mouth. She took it to the head like a champ. Uh, he asked, you know, her if he, if she trusted him, he got some strawberries and he put it in his mouth and started kissing her. And she wanted another one when she was asked. She wanted another one. To me, Shaq thought outside the box on this one. He blended eating what she likes to do and kissing. And uh, I want to know what his critique of her kissing, because only reason is because she says she's a bad kisser. She said this in multiple episodes. So uh, I don't know. And then see drool rolling down his face or her face. So I wonder how he thought about it. Um, they were more kissing and it was leading them into the bedroom. But then we did get a confessional with Kirsten and she said, only Shaq and I will know if we consummated our marriage. Well, we see next week. Shaq is sharing the, the good news that they did. Finally, kissing led to sex too. <laughs> She works fast. <laughs> well, that is it for now. Thank you for staying with me to the end. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. And I thank you in advance. But I got to go because I got living to do. Bye.